Hi, my name is David, and today we're going to continue our learning about GraphQL using Apollo Server version 4. And we're going to learn about the GraphQL schema basics. So we're going to talk about the main points in about the official documentation here. And this page has a lot of examples, but we can't really run this code because uh, we don't have the corresponding resolver. So we're mostly going to discuss the main points here. So to summarize what we've done before, when we use GraphQL, how it works is that in the front end, we make a request and then it hits our Apollo server and our Apollo server goes to the corresponding resolvers. And then it looks at the type devs and the type that it has, and then gets the data from a database and returns it to the user of what they ask for. So in this case, they're making a query. So it sees the query here, here, and it's making a query for books. So it sees books here, books here, and it's returning an array or a list of book that has this type. So it goes to our database, gets that type and returns it back and gives them the title of Arthur of that book. And in this lesson, we're gonna learn more about the type devs inside of it like this, sorry. This part and also this part. So with schemas, there's the two main parts are the types and then the fields. So in red, I put the types. And in this case, we have a type book. And in the fields here, we have a title that's a string and an author that's a string. And that makes up a schema for GraphQL. So we can look at the fields first as in the green. So fields, their names are camel case. So here you have to give it a name. We gave it title or the documents, gave it title and author. So it has to be a camel case when you name it. So it could be title book like that, if it's two words. So these fields can be these main parts, a scalar, object, enum, union, or interface. The most commonly you're gonna see is a scalar objects and in scalar there's many different types and int integer float with decimals strings boolean true false or an id so you can use this as any of these fields here you can also use objects as a field so another type book we can have another type arthur um there that can be a like first and last name inside this type book enum when there's a, a strict choice of what it can be. And then unions interface we'll get into our next lecture. This information can also be in a list format. So if we look at this um, schema, we see here the object is author, and then it returns the name, which is a string and books. And book is another type of an object. But we see here there's it's nested inside brackets. So it's gonna return a list of books. So there's also field nullability, meaning that you can add an exclamation point and it means that you can't return null. I know it's like a double negative kind of, so I like to think of it as it must be provided for the schema to work. So like um, for this type R3, if you don't get a name inside of it, it's going to error. And then with list, uh, there's two points where you can put an exclamation mark. One is inside the bracket. And that means that items inside of it can't be null. So this can't be null inside of it. And then outside of it means that uh, this entire field can't be null as well. But it is OK to have it as an empty list, as in a list with nothing inside of it. So those are the main fields. And then now the types. So the types here, we can see is um, book and we use Pascal case. So we capitalize the first letter for it. And then every following word for the name of the type. So here are the main types, scalar, object, enums, union, and interface. So unions interface, we're gonna get to in our next lecture 
But scalar, it's the same thing as here. But we don't really see it as a type. It's kind of pointless having it as a type. It's mostly used as fields within um, the schemas. Now, objects are our main things. So they're a collection of fields. And if we look here at this example, this will creating this object, this book, we're, get, we're creating it, giving it a name of book and creating this. And then we have an author inside of it. So this author is a nested object inside of this object. And we see here, author is here. And then there's a string and a list of books. So each of them is nested inside of each other, which you can do in GraphQL. It's one of the many benefits of it. And now this special type of objects that we will see, the two main ones, our query and mutations. So first off with queries, it's a entry point for queries. You can think of it as a get. So when we're getting information, we'll have to use this. And we can see here, we use the syntax of it, we use type and then use the keyword query. And then now we give it a name. So this has a query name of books in the green. And then what does it return? We have to the right. And in this case, it's a list of book that book object that we had before. Now there's a second query with authors and that returns a list of authors. And let me copy this closer for reference. Great, so how it looks like is that, let's say you wanna make a query for books and authors. So you, you write query and get books and, and authors, it's the name you come up with and then it does books and books returns an array of book. And in this case, and that's nested inside of it and you just want the title of it. So you, you have it there. And if you also want authors, it will hit this query and then returns a list of Arthur and you just want the name back. So what we get to response is that the books will turn a list of books and it'll have the title with the corresponding title name and authors with the corresponding name because of um, it's a list here. Alternatively, we can do it another way. So if you wanna get all the books with the author name, cause if you do this, um, books, this is an object. So you have to um, write the nest, the properties inside of it and you can get the name of it. So books returns a list of book and then you want Arthur. So you have to expand out Arthur to string. So it will look like this. You make a query for get books and it will hit books. Sorry, it will hit this, hit this books. And then it returns a book with a title and author, but author is a object. So we have to create another object inside of it. And then that is where we get name because of there. And then we can see here, we get a books and that's an array. And then it has title and then name the title and then Arthur nested inside of it. So that's how um, we do our queries. Next, we will do mutations. And this is for create updates and deletes. So the syntax of how it works is that we begin with type and then mutation, curly brackets. And then in the green, we give it a name. And in this part, we give it parameters of what we're passing through. And you have to give it a name and then the a scalar type or just, yeah, the type of it or what each parameter is and then what it returns. In this case, it's the book this book object. So how it looks like is that if we want to add a book, we create a mutation, um, we give that mutation a name and then it goes to add books. So this add book connects to this add book and then it must have the same um, parameters that we pass in. So title, we pass in Fox in socks, Arthur, Arthur, Dr. Seuss, and then types match this is a string string, string. And now we return book 
So we know that book is a title author and author is a nested one. So we want to get back title author and then the name. So that, so this is defining the response we're gonna get back. So this is how it look like. So we're just getting back the exact book that we created. So that's mutations. And now subscriptions we'll do in another lecture. And then there's input. So it provides hierarchical data as arguments to fields. So before here, it's mainly used for mutations. And you see here, that is like a flat structure, title, author. What if you want something, a type that's like nested inside of it? For example, so this example doesn't have anything nested inside of it, but the syntax of it is that we start with input instead of what we've seen before, type. And then you give it a name, and then you define the fields of it, title, string, body, string. And this is how we make it have hierarchy, because in this example, we are creating input blog post content of a title, body, and media. And media is another input type with uh, its own fields. So that creates hierarchy. So you And that has a format and URL. And that for, media format is an enum that can either be video or image. So to create a mutation of using this as an input argument is that you have a mutation to create a blog post and you're passing through content, which is a blog post content, a title, body, media, and then nested it, format, URL, and then media format being either image or video. And then you can pass multiple parameters using inputs as well. So you can have an ID and also the input type. Another thing are enums. And these are when you want and uh, give a choice of options of what you want the values to be. So the syntax of it is that you uh, say enum and then the name of it in Pascal case and the values are all caps. So this values are red, green, and blue and use all caps to as the wording of it. So users must pick from a prescribed list of options and then you can use enums wherever a scalar is valid and they serialize as strings. So just think of them, these values become strings. So here we're seeing it as a return value of allowed color here. And then we also see it as an enum where they have to pass in either red, green, and blue for this. And now we can see how it looks as a, in a query where they have a border color, this border color one, and they're passing in through a red that has to be there. So those are the main things. Some side things is that you can add descriptions to it and then you use quotes and you can add a corresponding description for what you're doing to help other developers understand what you're doing. And you can use multi-line uh, descriptions using this uh, triple double quotes. So you don't have to add the quotes for each line to add your description. So that mainly covers a lot of this section about the schema. I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much.